Hi, and welcome to our next lecture part on uh, basic techniques for hyperparameter tuning. So the first technique I want to introduce here is called grid search. It's very simple, um, it's still quite popular. And this grid search technique just tries out all different hyperparameter combinations on a multi-dimensional discretized grid. So this means that for each hyperparameter we assume that there's a predefined finite set of candidate values for each hyperparameter, which means we either assume that the hyperparameter is already of a categorical nature, or if it's a continuous parameter, that it has been completely discretized in a predefined manner before we run the grid search algorithm. And then during grid search, we now simply try out all possible combinations um, of um, yeah, hyperparameter, of hyperparameter values um, on this specified grid in some form of arbitrary order. And for each configuration, we run some form of um, train test, um, performance estimation or a cross validation to estimate uh, the generalization error. And then at the end, we simply pick the um, hyperparameter configuration with the best estimated generalization performance from this run uh, and return this as optimal configuration. So in the example down here, we have, for example, two hyperparameters, both apparently more of a numerical continuous nature. Um, we have a region of interest that we want to optimize the hyperparameters over. So both hyperparameters go from values uh, from minus 10 to plus 10. And we also have assumed that we have discretized them to um, 10 values each on this interval here from minus 10 to 10. So we have 10 for hyperparameter 1, 10 for hyperparameter 2. Obviously, then our whole grid contains 10 times 10 values. Um, for each of these, uh, for example, uh, maybe here, uh, hyperparameter 1 is something like minus 4. Um, and hyperparameter 2 is also something like minus 4. We are now running, for example, something like cross validation on our given data set. Um, we are returning um, a pretty bad test accuracy, something uh, in the range of uh, 50%. And then we're doing this for all of the other um, combinations. And we'll figure out that in this area above here, um, this is where most of the good configurations live. And I guess this one here might be the best configuration from uh, these 100 different ones that um, we have tried. So what are the advantages of this algorithm? First of all, it's super easy to implement. Um, I guess everyone could do this in a couple of minutes, at least for ba basic prototypes, for a basic prototype. All parameter types are possible. Yeah? So categorical stuff is obviously possible. Integer stuff uh, and continuous stuff is possible if we discretize them. Um, parallelization of the computation is also trivial. Yeah? It doesn't really matter um, in what sequence um, we evaluate these, um, these configurations. There's no real computational dependence between the experiments. So this is what we usually would call um, an embarrassingly uh, parallel process. Uh, that's super simple um, to parallelize. What are the disadvantages? Well, obviously this scales very badly. Uh, um, having to multiply these um, discretized um, values per hyperparameter um, results in something what we usually call a combinatorial explosion. So before in this example, we had 10 values for parameter one, 10 values for parameter two, consider adding a third one um, into the mix, and then it's 10 uh, to the power of three. So, uh, so a, a thousand combinations, uh, five hyperparameters would already be 10 to the five, 10 hyperparameters uh, with 10 discretized values, 10 to the 10, you can see where this goes. Um, becomes computationally um, very quickly infeasible. And also you can see that even for this simple 2D scenario here, we are wasting a lot of uh, computation time, right? I mean, at some point, I guess we should have figured out that we probably want to spend most of our efforts um, up here 
in the top right corner and not like looking um, down here because it, I mean, at some point, some, some form of, I don't know, local optimization or learning should kick in where we figure out that, yeah, the interesting areas actually up here. Um, so yeah, there's this uh, second point here, uh, inefficiency due to uh, the search of large irrelevant areas. And of course, um, the discretization is also somewhat arbitrary, right? Um, <laughs> if we use <coughs> if we use too many <coughs> discretized values for um, our hyperparameters, this combinatorial explosion will become worse. If we don't use enough, um, the discretization will be very coarse, and we are not really guaranteed that the interesting points lie not actually here in these gaps uh, between the discretized uh, values. The second algorithm I want to cover here is um, just a slight modification of grid search, which nevertheless uh, is usually considered to be um, better, a better alternative nowadays. And this is called random search. So random search again assumes that we have a finite number of hyperparameters. Um, we have a certain um, specification of uh, our feasible area that we want to search. Uh, so for continuous parameters, there will be probably some lower and some upper bounds. Again, here in this case, from minus 10 to plus 10 for both hyperparameters. But we are not going to assume that um, we have already predefined some type of discretization for the continuous parameters. Instead, um, we will now do the following. So during random search, we will randomly generate um, configurations in an arbitrary order, evaluate them, and then when our budget is depleted, um, return the best configuration that we have tried over the search. So we'll assume something like a uniform distribution here over the space, sample from this independently during the search procedure, try stuff out, and then just return the best configuration at the end that we have seen. Yeah. So in this example here, I've again constructed 100 points, but not on a regular grid, but um, yeah, but instead sampled from such a uniform distribution here over this over the square. So this looks not very different um, to to grid search. Well, principle is slightly different, but why should this be better? Okay, what are the advantages? It's it's again it's super simple to implement. All parameter types are possible. Um, can do this for numerical stuff. You can do this for integer stuff. You can also sample uniformly from categorical parameters. I guess you can also make this work for hierarchical um, and dependent parameters, no problem. Again, because there is no dependence between the experiments, um, it's again embarrassingly parallel. It's trivial to parallelize. Here's another nice feature, which is uh, makes it a bit different um, compared to random search. So this is really an anytime algorithm. So we can actually stop the search whenever our budget for computation is exhausted, or we can continue the search um, until we reach our performance goal. So this means we can do something like sample 200 points by random search, look at the um, best achieved performance. And if this is not enough for us, we can just add more points, sample more points, um, and um, kind of um, dynamically observe how our, how our uh, performance curve develops and then stop at the correct point in time. For grid search, we can only do this up to a point, right? We can only do this until the complete grid has been computed. After this, we're not actually sure how to continue this, right? Um, and the last advantage of random search is that it really requires no discretization. Each individual parameter is tried with a different value every time. Um, and there's also one slight um, advantage. You can see if you look at the uh, projection of the experiments during grid search and random search on the axes. So if you look at this here, we have a grid of 100 values, right? But for each parameter, we are trying out exactly 10 different values um, for hyperparameter one and for hyperparameter two. 
which means there are these gaps here where we are never trying out any we were never trying out any values for hyperparameter one yeah, during any type of experiment. If you look at random search and you know project our experiments on axis one and axis two, we have again 100 points in total, and we have 100 different points or uh, sorry different values we have tried out for hyperparameter one, and 100 different values we have tried out for hyperparameter two. Yeah. So um, there is actually not a zero probability for any hyperparameter one or hyperparameter two value um, setting. Um, so a, a certain setting of these two parameters, which we would never try as for grid search. So that kind of bypasses this discretization problem, at least to a certain extent. What it certainly does not really bypass is that the algorithm itself is um, yeah, not really learning anything, not doing any type of local optimization. And it will still result in many evaluations in areas with um, low likelihood for improvement. And this also scales badly to um, high dimensional hyperparameter spaces. And uh, if we are unlucky, we will still need a lot of samples to cover the whole space in order to um, find um, an optimal configuration. So the only reason why this still might work quite well in higher dimensional spaces um, is if there's large areas in our search space um, where many configurations have an acceptable performance value. Uh, so the probability um, that we are hitting a well-performing configuration must be um, yeah, not too low, to, so to speak. This is like a little small pocket here um, in high dimensional space and that we kind of need local information to move towards this little pocket uh, of optimal performance, then random search will also not um, perform very well. Um, and here's one final example, um, which is not too difficult just to show you how this um, could perform in practice. So here I've um, tuned a simple random forest with random search. I have uh, chosen a five-fold cross-validation, picked this sonar data set uh, in R, and then optimized uh, three different parameters of the uh, random forest. So I've optimized the number of trees, um, I've optimized the mtri parameter, and I've optimized um, the minimal node size in each tree. So these are three integer parameters um, going um, from these minimal and maximal values. And here you can see how the area under the curve develops over the iterations of random search running on and on and on and on and on. So um, apparently we are starting with a not too bad value. Um, I don't know, a little bit below um, 0.9 um, points for the AOC and at the end we arrive at something that's about 0.94 points uh, after 150 iterations of tuning.